Alright, welcome back guys. If you're watching this video, it's because you have a little bit more interest in how the MCP 3008 or 3004 analog to digital converter actually works. Uh, in our previous videos, we showed how you can pull the data from the chip using these two lines of code here, and I said that I would explain how it works in a later video uh, for those interested. So the way this sensor works is you send in three bytes of data, and this is specified in the um, data sheet here. So if we scroll down to, this is a 40 page uh, data sheet, if we scroll down to page 21 here, uh, you have to transmit data to the chip because if you're going to want to get a reading from the chip, the chip needs to know which channel to read. We have eight channels, right? So you have to specify which channel you want to read and you do that by sending a bit, um, or sorry, a byte with the first bit as a one and all the other bits is zero. So this is kind of like the start signal, like, hey, yo, we're about to tell you what's going on. And then we actually say what's going on, and that's in the second byte, and then the third byte is just being sent, and it doesn't really matter what we send in the third byte. So that could be zero, it could be one, whatever. What we get out after sending in three bytes is three bytes of data back. So we get the first byte, which for us doesn't really matter, and then we get the second two bytes. Now, because this is a 10-bit chip, we get 10 bits distributed over um, two bytes. So our last byte has eight bits and we have two bits here. Now keeping that in mind, let's go back to what we have to send the chip. So the second byte has these bits here highlighted, like these are the ones that we that it interprets. So it, it, it tells you whether or not you want a, uh, what kind of signal you want. Now if we roll up to page 19, this is configure the bits for the MCP 3004 or for the 3008. Since I'm using the 3008, we'll focus on this one here. So we can have a single-ended or differential uh, input configuration, and we specify that, if we scroll back down, we specify in this bit whether or not we're doing single or differential. Now, since we're doing signal, uh, single, rather, we want this bit to be a 1, otherwise differential is 0. So this is how the uh, chip knows whether it's single-ended or differential. We then specify which channel, using these three columns here, D0, D1, D2, which one we want to call. And for those who know binary, this should be pretty straightforward, but for those who don't, let me explain how binary works really quickly. So, binary, 1s and zeros, right? Um, doesn't mean much to you if you don't know what you're reading, but it's actually quite simple. So we have, uh, let's say we have this number here in binary. So the rightmost placeholder, that is this one here that I'm currently blinking on, denotes 0 or 1. Now normally if we were to just focus on say this number in binary, uh, you and I would read that as 11, but in binary that's actually binary 3. And the reason is, is you have your 0, 1 uh, column and then you have your 2 to the power of 1 column. So generally speaking you read right to left, you read uh, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 4, and so you go, you, you, you increase. So the way you would read it is if you wanted to count to uh, binary 1, binary 1 would be that, binary 2 would be that, binary 3 would be that, binary 4 would be that, 2 to the power of 2, binary 5, binary 6, binary 7, and binary 8, right? Which would be uh, the next level up, 2 to the 3, right? So 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3. So since we understand that, and knowing that we have 8 channels on this, here uh, is our way of determining which channel we are looking at. So we have 0, we have binary 1, we have binary 2, binary 3, binary 4, binary 5, binary 6, binary 7, right? For a total of 8 channels. So scrolling back down, taking a look here, we see that we specify single versus differential, and then we pick of our eight channels, zero through seven, uh, which one we want. Now notice how those four are on the leftmost side of the byte, and these four here don't mean anything. That's exactly what we do in our program here. So we are transferring in the first byte contains one, and, oops, a little too far, our first byte should contain one, and then we specify one and then our uh, 
our uh, uh, what channel we want to read. So we add together eight plus channel. So eight in binary, as I mentioned, is this number here. And so if we wanted channel uh, zero, that would be what we send versus eight plus one, this is binary nine. So normally when you would populate this in a bit, it would be written as this. So uh, that is um, zero, 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 eight plus one would be uh, binary nine, which we would send out to the chip and that would be interpreted as one. Uh, so anyways, that would be sent out to the chip. Now the problem with this is we have these four zeros and then we have which channel we want to read and the way we need to send it is what channel we want to read followed by four zeros. Oops. So the way you get around that is you go, wouldn't there be a convenient way to shift these four bits to this four bit location? And that's exactly what this bitwise operator does. We push these four bits over to the left, converting this to, actually I can comment this out so it doesn't actually affect the code. We convert this to that, that that's, that's what this uh, double symbol four means and then our final byte is zero because on the data sheet we don't care what we get out of it. So now that we understand that it should be a lot easier to understand how we process the data. It says here on the spec sheet how we receive our data the first byte doesn't matter to us. Our second byte the first entries don't matter. What matter are these uh, is the B9 B8 here that you see the bit 9 bit 8 this here you see are 10 cells minus the null there 10 cells in total and i mentioned this is a 10 bit process a uh, 10 bit chip so what that means is we have 10 uh, 2 to the power of 10 which is 1024 numbers that we can hold in these here 10 bits now this is how we receive our data but we want to combine all of this into something that we can actually actually understand in Python, like a binary, a complete binary number. We don't want to have two bytes. We want to have one value that holds everything. So we are getting this second one, which holds uh, this second byte, which holds the the last two bits in it. And we want to shift these bits to the leftmost position of our bit string, if you want to call it that, that we would have running in Python. So that's what we're doing here. So we're calling on the second byte and only the last two positions of it. And we're shifting them eight positions to the left. So normally we would be importing uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For example, let's say if we were to import this value here, we're only focusing on these two values and then we're shifting them eight positions over. And those eight positions over would give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we if, if this is what we had at the end of our uh, byte, we now transformed it to this and then we append to it the binary values of our second byte. And this could be a series of ones and zeros, but there's only eight bits in this byte. So we, we, we add these eight bits if it's appropriate. So let's say this here is that second byte, which, you know, some of these are gonna be ones and some of them are going to be zeros. And now we have this number here, which is binary representation of our reading. So that would be from zero to 1023. And that's what these two statements do. And different analog digital converters might have different commands you need to send. For example, instead of sending start bit one, maybe it's, you know, whatever, uh, 1000, uh, whatever this position is, one zero 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 followed by seven zeros. Or perhaps this part here isn't on the left side, but is on the right side. So that's where checking the data sheet is important if you have a device other than the one that's being used in this tutorial. And that's how you can better understand what it is you're actually dealing with instead of just blindly moving forward and accepting the tutorial for what it was. So I hope that kind of clarifies a little bit uh, understanding what these two lines do and how you can apply this to other uh, ICs that you might get. And I hope 
you know that helped you out so in my next video I'm going to show you how you can use a digital sensor to also get temperature a completely different way to go about getting temperature and I'll see you in that video